genres. Okay, so let's go back to horror. So there are two ways to think about genres. There's the narrative and there's the technical convention. So how do you know that a horror film is a horror film from the way it looks? How do you know? With the posters, the titles. Just yeah. I don't know, just thinking about the light. <laughs> Think about the, let's start with light. It's, it's, dark. Dark. Yeah. it's dark, isn't it? Or if it's a kind of bloody slasher movie, it's red. Yeah. yeah, literally. So dark, yes. What about the music? It's creepy music. Yeah, yeah. And also the editing. The jump scares. Like, so how does it, how do you, how do you, does an, um, someone who makes a horror film, how do they edit the film? Do you know what I mean by editing? Yeah. The cuts. Yeah. So what you'll have typically with a horror film is you will have a long take, mm -hmm. yeah? So it, it will be the same scene for a long time, but the music will build up suspense and then yeah. there'll be a suddenly cut that will make yeah. you jump, yeah? yeah? So that's very typical of a Hollywood film. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the story, what kinds of horror films are there? There's like these kind of spiritual films where like ghosts and, right? So there's kind of axe murderers, there's ghosts, there's, I've seen some very scary Japanese women. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Japanese women, <laughs> but, but I've seen some, and I'm not, you know, so that's interesting. Like haunted houses? And yeah. Haunted, yes. And tunnel. Pardon? Tunnel. Tunnel? Tunnel. 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 Uh, ch channel. And uh, it's a uh, mountain, and there's a tunnel for the cars. Mm. Tunnel, haunted tunnels, yeah. okay. Haunted tunnels. Oh yeah, haunted tunnels. That's a very narrow genre, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fair enough. So every genre, so from science fiction to action to drama to rom-com to comedy, history, they all have particular conventions of technology, particular conventions of story, and this is all designed because it guarantees satisfaction to the audiences and it guarantees profit to Hollywood. What genre is The Truman Show? It's drama. I think it's science fiction, fiction and comedy. Is it comedy? Yeah. Oh, come on, Jim Carrey, he's a classic. But, like, but this one wasn't the comedy one. I think you need to watch no. it again. Yeah, the good There's some comedy. very funny moments. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're not laugh out loud moments, yeah. but, but definitely they are funny. Yeah. I think it is. That was funny in God Minute. <laughs> you might. That's maybe, scary. It's not even funny. It's scary and funny. I agree with you. So the whole purpose of genre is that they give you something familiar and they give you something new. And industrially and according to the rules of capitalism, they minimize risk and they guarantee profit. They are also useful because they facilitate planning and efficiency. So take Harry Potter, you use the same studio, yeah? Again and again and again, and that's efficient in terms of um, uh, production. So I've already said that the typical Hollywood film is, um, typically starts with an equilibrium, then there's disequilibrium, and a new equilibrium is restored at the end. Let's just get, change the focus slightly. <coughs> Um, narratives have to be realist and believable, yeah? So it's almost like, I don't know if you've heard of the phrase, um, suspending disbelief, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what we do psychologically when we go to watch a Hollywood movie or we watch it on Netflix or whatever, we know it's not real, but we, it looks real. And while we're watching it, we get pulled into the, the narrative, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, what makes, I'm arguing, and I'm not the only one, but what makes Hollywood movies so powerful is that we think it's just a movie. Mm -hmm. But or everything, it's a movie about real life. It's got politics, it's got ideology, it's got history. So it shapes your unconscious mind, and back to your point, maybe promoting white supremacy, white beauty, white power, mm -hmm. all of those things, and you don't even realize it working on the unconscious.
Because remember, we've talked about this. When did advertising begin? It began primarily at the same time as, as Hollywood, yeah? It does use advertising techniques. It does use propagandist techniques, yeah? It's just as powerful, if not more powerful than the news, because it's more popular. Um, okay, so how are we doing for time? I feel like I'm taking more time today. So slightly oh, it's fine. Um, this word ideology. So the main ideology we are told that America, American Hollywood films sell us and um, give us is the American dream. It's very important that we re remember why it's called a dream, because the dream is the unconscious bit, yeah? And don't forget that advertising is about selling you a dream, mm. yeah? Um, so it's got all those connotations of Freud and psychoanalysis there. What is the American dream? Has anyone been to America? Yes. What was it like? Did it look the same as, did you feel you were in Hollywood? No. No? no. Yes? No. <laughs> You're not sure? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it felt like you were in Hollywood. Like, it's not that, I mean, it's close to Hollywood, but it felt like this picture perfect. Like, so it looked similar. It looked similar, yeah. But did it, was it like everybody was happy, like um, Jim Carrey? Everybody was like friendly and happy? I think yes, but New York not. New York not. Yeah. <laughs> So would it be fair for me to say that the American dream is fake? Yes. Yes. So why does Hollywood sell this ideology? What's the point, do you think? Because there is someone who would it. It's money making. It's mm -hmm. to encourage mm -hmm. immigrants who believe that they can have a better life in Hollywood mm -hmm. and then they get sucked in and then you know, it's not as great, but it's too late, yeah? Yeah. yeah? So the American dream is a melting pot. It's a land comprised of immigrants who can achieve success regardless of the circumstances of their birth. Well, sorry, your birth actually often dictates what happens in your life. It's called the lottery of birth. That is the opposite of the American dream, right? Because the American dream is anyone can be a success. Just work hard. Yeah, that's capitalism. Yeah? That's capitalism. Focus on individual achievements. So notice that Hollywood films don't, tend not to talk about society. Yeah, they tend not to talk about poverty. There are no barriers to success except through the lack of individual psychological qualities. Hollywood films promote competition rather than cooperation. Com individual competition over social cooperation. What is the ide ideology of the American dream? Individuals overcome obstacles to success. Inequalities are in invisible. Racial inequalities, gender inequalities, uh, material inequalities are largely invisible. That's incredibly misrepresentative. Right? We've done narrative closure. Now the next one um, is slightly always tricky to explain, but I think I, I think. Um, it's, it, it should be um, relatively straightforward. So maybe I'll, I'll, just, I'll just ask you straight away. If we just follow the Frankfurt School prescription, take the medicine and just think, Hollywood is all dumbed down, ideological, conservative, American dream rubbish. It's all fake, yeah? What's wrong with that analysis? We have to do something like a human show. Precisely. And what do you think The Truman Show offers that other Hollywood films do not? Challenge you the ideology of, uh, of Hollywood itself. How do you prove that Hollywood is having an effect on your ideology? How do you prove that it's making you more conservative? How do you test that? But how do you prove that? You can't prove it very easily, can you? Yeah. Mm. You can't measure it. Yeah. Yeah? Because we are dealing with some... So, I want to put it into left brain, right brain terms. Because what Hollywood does is it tricks the right brain. Yeah? And makes you think that everything is fixed and predictable. 
yeah? And it makes you think that, yeah, so don't forget the left brain fixes reality, it represents reality, it's fake reality, yeah? And the right, and it switched, so it means that the left brain inhibits the right brain. We just switch off when we watch, when we consume. Same with social media, same with our phones, which we talk about next week. Same with film, same with TV, we just switch off, yeah? Um, so, it's very hard to prove from a political economic perspective that what the Frankfurt School argues. We kind of know it's true, but how, you know, and it's not the only influence on our minds, is it? There's also education, there's also culture, yeah? So, we cannot, it's, it's, it's too narrow to just say, we all accept capitalist ideology because of Hollywood. I think that's too narrow. Um, so, this is what I'm saying here before we watch The Matrix. Um, we cannot tell how ideology works on audiences. Now, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll give you a lecture on audiences, which argues that gives you two perspectives. One is that audiences are powerful, that's all called active audience theory. The other one is that audiences are, are weak and powerless. But I want to argue, as I think I have throughout this course, using Stuart Hall and so on, and using Miguel Chris, that we can be more media literate. We can enjoy Hollywood yeah. without becoming horrible, nasty capitalists. Yeah. Or can we? That's an open question. Mm -hmm. You know, we it can. does have an effect. Definitely. But maybe we should have more balance in what yeah. we watch. I mean, here's an example. Have you noticed how violent most Hollywood films are right now? Mm -hmm. Netflix and so on. Mm -hmm. Why are we watching this? I tell you why. Because it's normalizing war, so that we accept what's going on in the real world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember what I said um, with advertising. I think I said it with news. Um, if the news represented uh, wars in the reality of the suffering and, and um, killing and horrible cruelty that, that it causes, there would be no war, right? So I'm sorry to have to say that all this violence in Hollywood is ideologically selling conflict. It's normalizing conflict. And it's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of men, they'll say, oh, you know, it's... Um, it's great, it's really violent, and it's like, but you're, you're doing that violence to yourself. Yeah. And if, you are, if you're more sensitive, and I, my mother is like this, bless her, she's like, I can't watch that, I can't, because it's affecting me. Yeah. And that's what's happening to society. We're all watching violence and thinking it's not affecting us. Yeah. Come on, it is affecting us. Yeah, because I just want to tap on something that you just mentioned sure. about audience and their the role in changing things or not. Yeah. I remember last year, I think there was this movie in, uh, in Disney, which was Snow White. Oh yeah. So there was the premiere, and it was- Snow White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then people gave so much, um, the, the, the main actor, the lead actor was very, um, she, was, she was basically rude and full of herself in the way she was talking and addressing Snow White, and the history of Snow White. The backlash that she got, made people cancel, like made the producers basically cancel the movie, which cost a lot of millions of dollars. So I think in that aspect, if someone showed real aggressiveness or real rudeness, people in the audience will, 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 will take action. Because yeah. the backlash on, on social media, on, on TikTok and everywhere, they were giving them like so bad, so much yeah, bad time, they had to cancel the film, which cost a lot of money. Well, that, that's an interesting example. Yeah. Do you think that, but do you think that is the general trend? No, that's not I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. That's what worries me most. Right. No, I that we're agree. all young people are growing up yeah. with. I mean, honestly, if you if you do a, a textual analysis mm -hmm. of, you know, the average Hollywood film, there's like several deaths in one story, yeah. or you know, that's not real life. Right. It's, you know, it's make it's actually making us, and I'll be talking about this later, afraid of. It's making us think, you know, there are creepy people that want to kill us outside. Mm -hmm. It's literally having that psychic effect. So that's, that's the, the, the danger of it. So 
Another thing that I need to um, mention, if there is time, and there's just enough time. So the title of the lecture was Hollywood uh, Fantasy or Imagination. So what do I mean here? Fantasy is what Hollywood gives us, like advertising. Ha Hollywood gives us the fantasy that we can be happy by consuming the movie, mm -hmm. or that the world is, ha is full of good people and bad people, but the good people always win. Yeah? That's fantasy. And that closes your mind. That makes your left brain dominate your right brain. What you need to know is the reality of the world, and you need to imagine solutions for making the world better. You're not going to get them from Hollywood, right? Yeah. So imagination is becoming active. And sometimes being active is just not watching violent Hollywood films. That's an act action in itself. Don't just think, oh, I need to watch this because my boyfriend does or watches it, you know, I should watch it. And it's just, it's just entertainment, you know? It's not. It is entertainment, but it's not just entertainment. So in Belgium, for example, uh, fan culture, so it's not just Belgium, but there, there's research on this. Some young people prefer particular films. These are called cult films or fandom. I don't know, you could probably think of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was very, very popular with young people, but that was probably before your time. Um, so it's, it's it, another kind of counter-argument to the Frankfurt School about Hollywood is some cultures prefer some Hollywood films. It's not universal appeal. It's not. Um, it, it's kind of obvious to say this, but why do we like good guys? Because the audience likes to identify with the good guys. So the young men that watch horror films with hip, sorry, not horror films, but some horror films maybe, no, maybe not, action films with Superman and, and Spider-Man and so on, young men, but maybe women to a certain extent, they identify with that hero, and they and and don't forget again the way uh, the hero is represented is like he's like especially Spider-Man. Spider-Man's interesting. He's the first Spider-Man. He's just like a regular nice young guy, but has this superpower. My God, that's what all young boys want, right? And all the bad people, you don't. They're just like cardboard characters. They're one-dimensional. Aren't they? You, you never know what kind of person, you don't know why they're so angry or why they're so hurt. You never get to know that. So audience identification. We've talked about cultural imperialism. So, you know, is Hollywood white super, white about white supremacy? Is it is it promoting Western culture over non-Western culture? And you'll have to answer that question yourselves. So we're gonna to go to the matrix and I'll make some points about that. And then we'll stop. So the Matrix was came out roughly the same time as uh, the I am sure fine products you love and prices you love too. Matrix so you can rock your world, not your savings. Matrix came out in 1999. Join the perfect blend at the perfect price. With star reviews from you and star prices from us, start your search on Amazon today. of the planet, we are the cure. Who are the, who are the we? What, what are we talk, we're talking about artificial intelligence. Yeah. It's in the Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. It's telling us artificial intelligence is going to fix everything. Yeah. Oh my god. Outdoors. 
Matrix is a metaphor for the mass media, but in particular for digital mass media. We are literally becoming the media. Yeah, we are getting lost in this crazy, crazy media world uh, that's called digital, that's, that's, that's through our screens. So what's really interesting about <coughs> the Matrix for me, and some of you may or may not agree, that what Wachowski brothers wrote the script, they are actually Essentially, they're Marxists, but they, they're kind of not, they're interesting Marxists, like a lot of Marxists are not very interesting, I would argue. Um, but I'm not saying that to say that Marxism's bad. I don't want to get into trouble. Um, but yeah, sorry, just, I'm just trying to find the right place in my notes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, remember Truman, it's called True Man, so it's all about truth and 